بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off approximately two weeks ago so we were on the the eighth nullifier of Islam, which is to do with magic, taking part in it, any sort of partaking of uh, magic uh, leads to nullifying your Islam. As the Sheikh mentioned in the previous lessons when we were translating the book, the results in shirk, which uh, the major shirk, which therefore results in the person leaving the fold of Islam by partaking in magic. So just to continue uh, the last part of uh, this uh, eighth nullifier, the Shaykh continues and he says, وَعَوْضًا عَلَى مَا بَدَأْتُ بِهِ وَهُوَ أَنَّ دُخُولَ الْإِنسَانِ فِي السِّحْرِ لَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا بِنَبْذِ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَالْإِعْرَادِ عَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ وَاتِّبَاعِ الشَّيَاتِينَ أَوْرَدَ فِي هَذَا الْمَقَامِ قصة سمعتها من أحد الأشخاص حصلت له هو مباشرة يحدثني يقول كنت إنسان كنت إنسان فقير وعشت فقيرا فكان لي جار يأتي إليه الناس يطلبون منه أشياء ويتعاملون فكنت أرى دائما تحت وسادته أموال ويخرج منها ويؤتي الناس فجلست عنده يوم وليس يوما وليس عنده أحد وقلت له هذه الأموال أعرف أنت جاري وليس لك ميراثا وليس لك تجارات وليس لك إلى آخره فأريد أن تدلني على طريقة حتى أكون مثلك وأنا جار وأخذ يذكر جيرته له يقول فقلت أنا أريد أن أكون مثلك قال أنا أدلك على طريقة تكون مثلي لكن تعاهدني أهد أهد أنك جميع الخطوات التي أخبرك بها تفعلها ولا تترك منها شيئا يقول فأعهدته يقول لكن من رحمة الله سبحانه وتعالى بي أنني نشأت منذ صغري لا أضيء صلاة ولا أبيع في الصلاة ولا أشتري يقول الصلاة يقول الصلاة هذه عندي لا يمكن أن أضيئها مهما كان نشأت على ذلك منذ الصغر فحفظني الله عز وجل من هذه الورطة بهذه الصلاة so then the Sheikh, he continues and he says, and returning to, to what I said in the beginning and the beginning of this lesson with regards to nullifiers of his, this eighth nullifier, he says that returning back to what I began with and what I mentioned earlier, and is, which is that a person enters magic, a person cannot enter in the field of magic except that he desecrates the book of Allah Jalla wa ala. And the Shaykh mentioned that extensively in previous lessons with regards to what the Shayateen ask the people to do who, are, who want to enter in the, into the fold of magic. And so as we know, to enter the fold of magic, one must desecrate the book of Allah Jalla wa ala by various means. Some of the examples that the Shaykh mentioned is by stepping on it, ripping it apart, writing it. Uh, you know, backwards in, in, in impure, like period blood, going in the bathroom and stepping on it and throwing it around and all these kinds of depraved acts uh, that the shayateen ask uh, 
the person who wants to enter in a contract with them with regards to this magic to do. So the Sheikh says we've established that and and generally, obviously, in desecrating the deen of Allah generally and following in the footsteps of what the shayateen, the devils, say to the person and command the person to do. The Sheikh, he continues, he says, uh, I came across a, a story that was related to me, uh, related to me regarding a person. Uh, and, and, it, and this person told this story, he says, that basically he had a neighbor uh, and um, he was a poor person. So, you know, he was, uh, this person, he was a poor person uh, and he lived a, a life of poverty, basically. Very poor person. And he had a neighbor uh, that people used to come to all the time. He used to come to his house, come to his door, asking, requesting things, asking things. And he used to obviously work with these people, you know, requesting for them to do things and working with them. And he said that I would see my neighbor, this neighbor of mine, you know, I knew him well, obviously, he was my neighbor. And, you know, under his pillow and stuff, he'd have a lot of money. He'd have a lot of money. And he would give this to the people. <coughs> Excuse me. He would obviously give things to the people, money, mal, this sort of stuff. So one day, he said, I sat next to him. One day, I, you know, I sat with him when nobody else was around, this neighbor of his. Uh, and, I, and he said, I said to him, you know, all of this wealth, I know that you're my neighbor. And I know that you don't have like any kind of inheritance or, you know, anything like that. But you have this wealth though. And you don't have any business. You don't do business. You don't do anything, but you've got this money. And he says, I want you to show me how I, uh, a way or whatever you're doing, show me what you're doing so I can also have what you have. I, you know, this wealth, show me how you're doing it. So even that, so I can gain some wealth because obviously remember he was a poor person in poverty and he said look and I'm your neighbor etc and he started obviously talking about uh you know talking to his neighbor about you know how, you know how he's been a good neighbor etc etc and the conversation goes on so uh the per his neighbor says to him he goes I uh, he, so he goes he says to his neighbor I want to be like you with all this money and you don't have anything to really show for it but you've got this money somehow so I want also I want also be like this. I want this money. So he says I want to be like you. And then his neighbor says, "Okay, promise me, promise me that you will do exactly as I tell you. Follow all the steps that I'm going to inform you of. Do them completely from A to Z, from the first step to the last step. Do them." He says, "I promise you." He says, "I'll promise you. I'll do everything." So he says, "I promised him that I would do whatever he tells me." So then the uh, the uh, the person who relayed the story he, go, he goes on to say, but because of Allah's mercy upon me, I've all I all so he tells a bit about his own history. He says that I was always brought up since I was a kid, since I was young. I was all I was brought up upon the prayer. The, from early age, I'd pray my five daily prayers. You know, from his family, his father's parents told him, taught him, and he goes, "There's no way in anything in the world that I would lose my prayer." That's something that I've got a strong connection with, with my five daily prayers. Yeah, this is what he's saying. So even he says like at the time of selling and, you know, buying or, you know, and at the time of the other, he goes, I'll stop. I wouldn't buy or sell when it was time to pray. He goes, that's how strong my connection with the prayer was. And, you know, the prayer is everything to me and I've got a strong connection to it. And he mentions this since I was, uh, since my childhood. So he says that Allah protected me because of this. So he'll explain. He goes, Allah protected me from the danger that he's going to mention because of the prayer, because of my prayer, because of the connection that I had, the strong connection I had to uh, to the prayer, the five daily prayers. So he goes on to say, he says, يَقُولُ فَقَالَ لِي تَذْهَبْ إِلَى سَاهِلِ النَّهَرِ بَلَدُهُمْ فِيهِ نَهَرِ مَعَ غُرُوبَ شَمْسِ وَشَمْسِ تَغْرُبْ بَيْنَ قَرْنَيْ شَيَاتِينَ وَهُوَ وَقْتٌ نَحْيُ عَنِ الصلاة اختار له هذا الوقت ووقت الغروب نزول قرص الشمس ودنوها ودنوها من المغيب قال تذهب عندما يدنو حاجب الشمس من المغيب وتقف على النهر يقول واعطاني اسما وذكر لي هذا الشخص الاسم اسم من اسماء الشياطين 
قال تقف بخدوء مستقبل الشمس وأمامك النحر وتنادي هذا الاسم مرات بصوت وأنت وأنت تنظر إلى الشمس قال سينشق النهر ويخرج ويخرج لك كائن حي كائن حي أو حي بصورة قد تكون موحشة وسيطلب منك طلبات تنفذها مباشرة بدون تردد هذا يحدث يحدثني أنا مباشرة يقول فذهبت إلى المكان في الوقت المعين وعملت ما طلب مني يقول لما ناديت باسمه مرتين أو أكثر انشق النهر وخرج حيوان هيئته موحشة وقال فلان ناداني باسمي فقلت نعم قال سأطلب منك بعد الطلبات قلت أنا مستعد يقول أول شيء طلبه مني قال تترك من الآن الصلاة فقال لي يهدثني والله سبحانه وتعالى حفظني بالصلاة قال لي وأذكر لكم كلمته بلسانه وبلهجته كما قالها لي قال قلت له الصلاة دي ما داير أتركها يقول مجرد مجرد أن قل أن قلت هذه الكلمة صاح بصوت عال ورجع فلقيت جاري بعد وقت يقول فخاصمني وضربني وشتمني وتكلم علي وقال أنت أفسدت علي صلتي وتكلم علي كلام قاسي يقول حمدت الله أنه حفظني بهذه الصلاة وإلا لو كان إنسان متحاونا ومتحاونا في الصلاة يدخل في ورثة عظيمة هي كفر بالله عز وجل ناقل من ملة الإسلام So continuing the Sheikh tells a story so he says he says that this person this neighbor of his not the Sheikh's uh, the person who told the story to the Sheikh so this person says then his neighbor said to him okay so now you promised me yeah, that you're going to follow all of these steps this is what you need to do so he broke it down to him he said to him He said, he said to him, go to uh, the bank of, a ri- or, or, of the river it, and in, in the city that this person lived or in this town that, or village that this person lived, there was a river that went through it. He goes, go to like the bank or, you know, where the, just close to the river bank, go to the river um, and uh, at the time of sunset, Maghrib time. And uh, the Sheikh says, as you know, that obviously the, the, the Shayateen and all that descend at this time. The shayateen descend at this time. And obviously, as we know, uh, that when the sun actually sets, yeah, when it starts to set, then obviously that's the time where uh, you cannot pray. Obviously, as we know, uh, Maghrib time is once the sun has gone down, yeah, and you can't see it, yeah? So once the sun has gone down, this is when the sun is going down, as we know, you can't pray at that time when the sun starts moving and setting down, yeah? And... He says that he, he chose this time for him, the time of Maghrib. And where the, the, the sun's disc obviously descends. He said, go to, he said to him, go when the, the, brow, the, the brow of the sun or the disc of the sun has gone, disappeared. And stand um, at this river. At the, at the river bank, at this particular river, in this particular place, which is the bank of a river. And he said to him that he gave him a name. He, he gave him a name of this shaitan. He says, call out this name when you get there. And he said, when you get there to the river bank, facing the sun as it sets, call out the name of this, this uh, being, uh, this shaitan. He didn't tell him the shay- the shaitan. Obviously, he found out afterwards, but uh, it was a jinn, of course. Yeah. So he goes, call out the name of so and so, and stand and make sure you're facing the sun as it sets, and lower yourself, you know, and humble yourself and say this name. And when you do this, the river will split, and you'll see a being come out of that river uh, in a beastly form. Like a beast, like an animal form, yeah. And he says, when I did that, that's what happened. And when this this beast said, when he said it, when the beast came out, he said, somebody called me. The so and so called me, and he said, yeah, I called you. 
And then he says that he started, this beast started requesting, this jinn started requesting uh, from him things to do for him. And he said, he replied to him and said, yeah, I'm ready to do what you're going to say. So then the, the person who's telling the story, he, he says that the first thing, the first thing that this shaitan told me to do was, he said, from now, leave the prayer. Don't pray anymore. As, as in your five daily prayers, your farz, your faraid, leave them. Don't pray anymore. And so this is what he said. And then he, he replied, he says, I can't leave the prayer and I'm not going to leave the prayer. As he told us earlier on in the story that this is something that he grew up with and he's used to. And, you know, he's got a strong connection to the prayer. He said, I'm not leaving it. So then this thing, this beast, this jinn, uh, got angry and made a loud sound in anger and it just disappeared. It left. Because obviously he wasn't following his instructions. So then this person was laying the story. He goes, I went back to my neighbor then. So another day I met my neighbor and I, I, I met him. And my neighbor, he says my neighbor started arguing with me and, you know, hitting me and uh, insulting me and talking over me. And he said, and, he's, and one of the things he said to him, his neighbor said to him was, you've corrupted my affair, my connection with, meaning the connection with that beast, that jinn. You've, you've basically destroyed that connection that, that I had. And he started being horrible to him and harsh to him in his speech. And then uh, the, the, the person who's relating the story says, you know, I, I thanked Allah, praised Allah, Jalla uh, said, Alhamdulillah, that Allah saved me and preserved me by way of my strong connection to the five daily prayers, you know, the prayer. And if it wasn't the case, if I didn't have this strong connection to my prayer, then I would have obviously fallen into this, into this grave matter, this dangerous matter of falling into shirk and ending up outside of the fold of Islam. So the Shaykh relates that story to us and he goes on to say, وَفِي هَذِي الْقِسَّةِ مِنَ الْفَائِدَةِ أَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَأَنْهَا حَفِذَ أَحِفْظٌ وَأَنْهَا حِفْظٌ لِلْعَبْدِ وَبِقَايَةٌ لَهُ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنْ كَيْدِ الْأَشْرَارِ وَشَرِّ الْفُجَّارِ وَهِيَ أَمْرٌ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَفْزَعَ الْإِنسَانَ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَيْهِ فِي كُلِّ أَحْوَالِهِ وَلِهَذَا مِمَّا يُنْسَحُ بِهِ مِنْ أَبْطُلِيَا بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذِي الْأُمُورِ سُحِرَ أَوْ شَيْءٍ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَفْزَعَ إِلَى اللَّهِ بِالصَّلَاةِ يُصَلِّي وَيَدْعُ اللَّهَ وَيَلْجَأُ إِلَيْهِ وَيُنَاجِيهِ وَيَطْلُبُ مَدَّهُ وَعَوْنَهُ وَأَقْرَبَ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمُ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ نَبِيلَ مُحَمَّدٍ So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, and from this story, why did he tell us this story? Because he says that there's, there's, a, there's a benefit of this story if we contemplate of what happened. And he says that the prayer, it, it, the person who prays and preserves his prayer, it, stop, it prevents him from committing sins and falling into all kinds of evil and more immoral acts. And that it preserves the servant of Allah and it creates a barrier between the servant of Allah and those immoral, evil actions and things that are out there by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. And it, and it creates a barrier between the person and uh, the plots of the evil ones and the evil of the immoral people and immoral people and things, yeah? And it is an affair that a, per, a person, the human, the person should, you know, be in awe of. And he should, you know, in, in all of his affairs. And this is why when, somebody's, uh, when somebody is uh, being tested or trialed, then the advice that is given to him is, uh, is to pray and is to supplicate to Allah Jalla wa Ala and to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to request and request and seek Allah's help and aid and assistance and 
the Sheikh mentions here that a person is close, a servant of Allah is closest to his Lord when he is prostrating. And obviously, when do we prostrate? In the prayer. That's when we are closest point to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Is when we, when we have a head to the ground in prostration. And so the Sheikh mentions these benefits for our reference. And he continues, so this, this concludes the eighth nullify. So inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll start the ninth one here uh, and uh, complete this page over here and then inshallah we'll call it a day and we'll continue next week. So the Sheikh continues, he says, he continues the next lesson. He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala, asha- wa ala ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. الناقد الثامن من نواقد الإسلام مظاهرة المشركين ومعاونتهم على المسلمين ودليل قوله تعالى ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين هذا هو الناقد الثامن ثامن من نواقد الإسلام Okay sorry so the one we just completed is the seventh we're on the eighth nullifier now هذا هو الناقد الثامن من نواقد الإسلام الأشرة مظاهرة المشركين ومعاونتهم على المسلمين والمظاهرة والمعاونة معناهما متقارب مظاهرة المشركين أو معاونتهم أي مساعدتهم ونصرتهم وتعييدهم قال مظاهرة المشركين ومعاونتهم على المسلمين اي لو ان انسانا نصر المشركين في قتالهم للمسلمين وعاونهم وساعدهم وايدهم وظاهرهم فانه يكون بذلك كافرا كفرا اكبر ناقل ناقلا من مله الاسلام لان هذه المظاهره والمعاونه لاهل الكفر على اهل الاسلام دليل على عدم قيام الاسلام في قلب من ظاهر المشركين وعاونهم على أهل الإسلام فإذا كان يظاهرهم ويعاونهم على المسلمين ويحب ويحب انتصارهم انتصارهم ويحب انهزام المسلمين ويفرح بانهزام المسلمين ويسر بانتصار المشركين فهذا دليل واضح على انتفاء الإسلام وعدم قيامه في القلب لأن وجود الإسلام يقتدي نصرة أهله ومحبة انتصارهم ويقتدي معاونتهم ومظاهرتهم ومساعدتهم أما إذا كان على خلاف ذلك فهذا دليل على عدم قيام الإسلام في قلب من ظاهر المشركين وعاونهم على المسلمين قال مظاهرة المشركين ومعاونتهم على المسلمين So then the Sheikh he goes on to say he says that the eighth nullifier out of the ten nullifiers of Islam, and the eighth one is aiding and assisting the uh, mushrikeen and the disbelievers uh, uh, in uh, over the Muslims. So basically, helping the kuffar uh, uh, and the mushrikeen and the kuffar over the Muslims. And the delil and the evidence of that is uh, part of the ayah that the Sheikh mentioned, which uh, we read. And if you go to the translation of that, well, we'll read the whole ayah. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 51. I'll read the whole ayah. O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as friends, protectors, helpers, etc. They are but awliya to one another. And if any amongst you takes them as awliya, then surely he is one of them. Verily, Allah guides not those people who are the polytheists and wrongdoers and unjust. So that's the whole ayah. Yeah. That we read, and that's part of the Sheikh mentioned. So, don't, you know, aid. And the, and the Sheikh is going to explain this. This is important to uh, understand this properly because a lot of people sadly uh, get this wrong and then they start doing, they start uh, saying, oh, this Muslim is kafir and that one's kafir and that ruler is kafir. And they go into some crazy, they get into crazy situations because they haven't understood this. So, these next two, three lessons, inshallah, are very, very important. Uh, and to be able to understand this principle and actually what uh, 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 you know 
wali actually is or walaya and tawalli and knowing what the terms are properly so we can understand them but inshallah we'll just finish this page off and we'll continue that as a sheikh will explain it next week so uh the sheikh goes on to say that it's helping and aiding and assisting the kuffar or, or, or the polytheists over the muslims this is generally what it means here and he goes on to say that um you know i.e. that he says a person he helps the he help the mushrikeen the polytheists in killing the muslims for example aiding them and assisting them in doing this and whoever does this then then he obviously fall, fall, falls into disbelief major disbelief which causes him to leave the fold of al-islam because the sheikh says that this is helping and aiding and assisting the people of disbelief over the people of al-islam and this shows this demonstrates clearly that whoever does this ha- has has a lack of islam within their heart they have a lack of islam within their heart they have, they, you know because of how they aid and abet uh, the disbelievers over the muslims causing harm to the muslims so the sheikh says if 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 it is then that the person's helping the disbelievers and aiding and assisting them over the muslims and he loves the help here this is important and he actually loves in his heart loves helping those disbelievers over the muslims and he loves the uh, uh, that the muslims lose yeah and you know lose in this affair and that is happy with the muslims loss and he's happy by uh, by way of that and he's happy with helping um the disbelievers then the sheikh says that this demonstrate to us demonstrates to us in a clear way uh, the uh that the uh, that islam in that person's heart but is not is not really there there's no islam in that person's heart and there's no establishing of islam in that person's heart because he says why because the presence of islam in a person's heart it necessitates and requires that that person helps the muslims and he loves the muslims and he loves helping the muslims and it requires him to help the muslims and to defend them and help them and aid them and assist them etc as for if the person is in opposition to that then that shows us clear evidence that the person has a lack of estab- uh, of establishing islam within his heart that there's no real islam within his heart and that he is actually he- and uh, because he's obviously helping the he loves the aid uh, uh he loves to aid and help the disbelievers uh, over the muslims and he also loves as the sheikh says loves uh, to see the uh, loss of muslims as in them wants to see them lose yeah and and the sheikh uh, mentions that here he goes on to say in this last paragraph we'll finish here in the last paragraph inshallah in the next 2 3 minutes he goes on to say qala wa dalilu qawlu allah ta'ala wa man yatawallahu minkum fa innahu minhum inna allah la yahdi alqawm alzalimin wa man yatawallahu ay alkuffar almushrikin منكم أي من أهل الإسلام فإنه منهم بمعنى أنه يكون بذلك كافرا وين وينتقد بذلك إسلامه يتوليه للكفار بتوليه للكفار قال ومن يتولهم والتولي للكفار الذي هو كفر ناقل من ملة الإسلام هو المحبة التامة للكافرين وحب وحب انتصار دين المشركين وَمُنَاصَرَةِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِيَنْتَصِرَ دِينَهُمْ عَلَى دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ فَمَنْ كَانَ بِهَذِي الصِّفَةِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ قَالَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّاهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ أي مَنْ كَانَ بِهَذِي الصِّفَةِ مَنْ كَانَ بِهَذِي الصِّفَةِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكُفْرِ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَهَذَا فِيهِ أَنَّ التَّوَلِّي لِلْكَافِرِينَ كُفْرٌ نَاقِلٌ مِنْ مِلَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ ويدخل تحت التولي للكافرين محبة انتصار دينهم ونصرتهم ومعاونتهم لينتصر دينهم على دين الإسلام ومحبتهم لدينهم لا لدنيا يحبهم لدينهم فهذا يسمى 
tawalli wa tawalli kufrun naqil naqilun min millati al-islam wa yanbaghi an yufarriqa bayna at-tawalli wal muwala so then in this paragraph the sheikh says he mentions the evidence that we read earlier and he goes on to say that it means that the person who aids and helps the disbelievers right uh, as in a muslim right a person from the muslims helps the disbelievers yeah uh, um and the sheikh he goes on to say this is the meaning of tawalli and he explains it further he says so whoever helps and aids and assists the disbelievers over the muslims then he is committed major disbelief and leaves the fold of islam by way of that and he says what does this uh, when allah said yatawallahum in this ayah at tawalli this word at tawalli what does it mean it, it means complete love for the disbelievers it means complete love for the disbelievers in terms of uh, loving to help them uh, in uh, and, was, and 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 loving to help their deen as in push their deen for example uh, and aiding and abetting and helping them and assisting them the disbelievers over the muslims to help the disbelievers religion to push their ideologies upon the deen of islam so the sheikh says whoever from this kind of uh, description whoever fits the description of mention what was mentioned there then they are from the disbelievers and he goes on to say he mentions a part of the ayah wa man yatawallahu minkum fa innahu minhum he says i e whoever is of this description then he's from the disbelievers and he's from the people of disbelief he is from the people of al islam the muslims and he says and in this is uh at tawalli helping and aiding and helping the kafirin the disbelievers it is major uh, disbelief um which causes the person the muslim to leave the fold of al islam and what comes under this term as the sheikh mentioned earlier is the love of helping the 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 uh, the religion of disbelief any of those religions of disbelief where whatever kind of concept or belief system ideology is is that the person that this so called muslim uh, is is it, it want is loves to help these disbelievers in pushing their deen and their ideologies and whatever else is and helping them and aiding them and uh, uh, with their religion and their ideologies and their way of life upon the religion of al islam so their love is for their deen not dunya so th- th- this is what atawalli means so it's this love is to do with uh, the the deen that is muslim is liking is liking or he's he loves uh, the deen of these disbelievers and he's helping and helping and aiding them in pushing their way of life upon the deen of al-islam and his people and it's not for the dunya and the sheikh will explain this uh, uh inshallah further down which we'll do next week bin lai ta'ala and the sheikh says that this is called tawalli and he says at tawalli is disbelief and whoever does this he leaves the fold of al-islam and the sheikh says it is incumbent and it's important extremely important that we differentiate between what at tawalli is and what al-muwala is two different terms people get mixed up with them and they wrongly apply them so for example like in the modern time they like if let's say a country doesn't do anything or whatever or there's a political situation going on so people will say for example oh these muslim countries etc are not doing anything uh, etc blah 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 they are helping the uh, uh, the disbelievers they are kufar you know something they may say like this and 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 they'll apply this term of tawalli in the wrong way they'll apply the the term of uh, 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 this term at tawalli and get mixed up with al-muwala and then they just do takfir of the muslims on mass scale on mass so it's important to understand these uh, terms uh, so we can correct ourselves and correct other people as well when they make these big big mistakes uh, uh, with not really understanding the quran and what allah is actually saying what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and then here as you can see the sheikh will explain he'll explain all this throughout the next lesson so what we'll do is we'll stop here inshallah and we'll go through this uh, uh, next week uh, 
and have a fresh start with this because it's very very important to understand so inshallah we'll uh, stop there and we'll continue next week next week inshallah subhanakullah wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh